OK, so the next step of this tutorial is to suitably specify a distillation column to separate off n-pentane from n-hexane and n-octane. The way we're going to do this is firstly use a shortcut distillation column to gain initial estimates of where we should start our fully rigorous distillation simulation tool from. If you recall the introductory lecture, these shortcut columns use approximate methods such as Fensk and Underwood and other similar relationships to work out roughly what number of stages we're looking at, roughly what reflux ratios we're looking at, and roughly what the condenser and reboiler duties are. So let's specify a shortcut column, and in doing so, we're going to intentionally run into a problem that I want to make sure that you recognize which we should be able to recognize right at this point in time, but more on that in a second. So what I'm going to do to start with is I'm going to duplicate this stream here, V100 liquid. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to keep the flash vessel here feeding my rigorous distillation column. I want to perform my approximate calculations on a duplicate of what's coming out of that stream. So I've dropped a new material stream onto the flow sheet. I'm going to double click it. And then I'm going to go down here, which says define from other stream. And I'm going to define it from V100 liquid. So that's fully specified that stream. And I'm going to name this V100 liquid duplicate. So I know that it's a copy. So my shortcut column tool is this tool here on the tool palette. So I'm just going to drop one of those onto the flow sheet. And it, of course, is red when we drop it on. And if we double left click it, we find that we've got a lot of things to connect up. So we require a feed stream, which we're putting the duplicate feed stream in, requires product streams. And so we have T100 distillate. And we have T100 residue. Then we have energy streams, so we have T100 condenser energy, and we have T100 reboiler energy. Note how I tie all the names of these streams to the specific column, so again, it's easy and human readable. Now, the top product phase I'm keeping as liquid, so this is specified as a total condenser. And the next thing it says is unknown key components. Now, a key component is a component around which you are splitting your mixture, and you'll find you have what's termed a light key and a heavy key. Your light key is the heaviest component that you want in the distillate. Your heavy key is the lightest component you want in your residue. So if we go down to parameters, we'll see we've got our light key in the bottoms and our heavy key in the distillate. Now, this column separates n-pentane, from n-hexane and n-heptane and n-octane. So my light key in my bottoms is the n-pentane. My heavy key in the distillate is the next highest boiling point species, which is n-hexane. I'm going to say what I want in terms of compositions approximately in each of these is, let's say, about 5 mole percent. We'll revise that later on. We don't want to set these um, specifications too tightly to start with, otherwise we'll find we end up with a giant column that we then have to reduce when we get to the rigorous simulation step. My streams are all at 4 bar, so I'm going to keep my condenser and reboiler pressures at 4 bar. And with those specifications, it already comes up with a minimum reflux ratio. So we can then specify our operating reflux ratio as, say, 1.2 times that, which roughly works out to about 1.1. And then the tool says, OK, so let's see what results it's predicted. If we go to the performance tab, we'll see that there's a minimum number of stages of 3.1, an actual number of stages of 8.4, which if we're thinking of a trade column means 9, because we can't have a fractional stage. Our optimal feed stage is 5.7. Again, for a trade column, this would mean between 5 and 6, because trays are discrete individual things. You can't have a fractional tray. Now we see a problem. Our condenser temperature is minus 110 degrees C, and our reboiler is 
Let's stop there and investigate why. Let's examine the material stream that comes from the top of this column, this distillate stream here. The phase here is zero. The composition contains methane. And so this is something that I mentioned earlier on, was that if we have a trace of methane within our feed here, if we force a total condenser, we're forcing a dew point calculation, which means we're forcing the simulator to liquefy the methane, which is what we do not want it to do. Now, in our physical distillation column, we'd have a vapor vent, and we'd just simply vent off any gas that wasn't condensed. In the simulator for the shortcut column, we can't do that. But what we can do is something else. What we can do is we can make use of the component splitter to roughly split off all the methane out of this hydrocarbon stream before it gets to this shortcut column. So let's illustrate how to do that. I'm going to move that shortcut column to the right a bit. I'm going to disconnect its feed. I'm going to select a component splitter and drop it on the flow sheet. I'm going to double click on it and see what needs specifying. So it requires a feed stream. So V100 liquid duplicate. It needs a distillate or an overhead. So this is now X100 overhead. And it needs a residue stream, X100 residue. Okay, the next thing that we're told is that we don't know what splits we've got. So let's go to the splits option here and we'll see all of our components and we can specify how much we want in the distillate and how much we want in the residue. So in the distillate, I want all of my methane and none of my other species. The next thing we're prompted is it doesn't know what pressure this stream is at. So if we go to parameters, we're going to equalize all stream pressures. It says not solved. And then we're going to calculate equal temperatures and it's solved. The motivation for putting this splitter here is just to remove the methane, don't, remember, don't forget. So if we double click the overhead stream, we look at the composition, it's pure methane. Its flow rate is about 1.1 kilomoles per hour, as expected. If we look at the residue, it's 93.3 kilomoles per hour. If we look at the composition, it contains no methane whatsoever. Okay, so X100 residue now has a methane-free specification. So let's put that back into our shortcut column and see what happens. So here's my shortcut column tool. The inlet is going to be X100 residue and I get an error which says the external reflux ratio must be greater than the minimum. So obviously the minimum reflux ratio calculation has changed compared to when we last did it. So if we go to performance, we can see, sorry, if we go to parameters, we can see that our specified external reflux ratio is 1.1, but the minimum is now 4.5 or thereabouts. Again, assuming that my external reflux ratio is 1.2 times the minimum. Let's specify that as 5.36. Our column converges. We close this and now we have a look at each of our streams. So my distillate stream is now at 84 degrees C, which is far more sensible. My residue is at 142 degrees C, which is actually unchanged. If we have a look at my distillate and what it contains, it's 95% n-pentane and 5% n-hexane. Okay, that's a starting point. We want to tighten those tolerances up a little bit later on, but we'll leave them as they are for the time being. And in the residue, I can see that I have 5% pentane and then the balance of the higher boiling point species. If we examine the performance of the shortcut column, we'll get estimates of our stage count, so we can see a minimum number of stages of six and a half, actual number of stages 14 and a half, so call that 15, rounded up. Optimal feed stage 9.9, .9, i.e. the feed comes in between plate nine and plate 10. 84 degrees C condenser, 142 degrees C reboiler. And there we have our heat flows for our condenser and for our reboiler. So these data here are what we're going to use to initialize our rigorous distillation column simulation.